in the eye with a sharp stick. Now, urinary tract infections and yeast infections, no fun, no matter where you live, no matter whether you're in Australia or north of the equator, these conditions are problematic. Let's take a brief overview of the <clears throat> urinary tract in the human body. This, of course, is the pelvis and the spine. This structure right here is the kidney. This interesting thing sticking on top is the adrenal gland. Of course, there are two kidneys, two adrenal glands. The tube that runs from the kidney to the bladder is called the ureter, and the bladder is down here. And then, of course, from the bladder, it goes into the urethra, and that is where the urine ultimately escapes the human body. Here is a blow-up of the kidneys and the bladder just to kind of get us in the ballpark and kidney there, right? Ureter there, it's the tube that collects that, um, the urine passes from the kidney into the bladder through the ureter. Uh, and there of course is the bladder, there's the urethra where the urine escapes the body. And this is where urinary tract infections and yeast infections propagate a lot. Of course, you can also have vaginal yeast infections, but because of the anatomical proximity of the vaginal area and the, the urethra, oftentimes when there is trouble in one part of the, one anatomical part of the body there, the bladder or the vaginal area, there can be trouble in both. So let's take a look at it. Sometimes when we have a bladder infection, the infection can travel up the urethra and infect the kidney. This is a rare occurrence. It can happen. And oftentimes when we have a kidney infection, uh, antibiotics are necessary. Most of the time for bladder infections, we can get well on the other side of a bladder infection. Quite frankly, you can get well on the other side of a kidney infection also without needing to resort to antibiotics, which of course is the MD's first, second, third, fourth, and fifth choice of therapeutic intervention. And if you'd like more information on this, please visit the webinar that I did on immune health. I talk about the net negative effects of antibiotics and quite frankly, the juvenile uh, juvenility of just throwing antibiotics at every type of infection it is an old-fashioned, outdated therapeutic, which is worn so thin that now the leading cause of antibiotic-resistant bacterial infections is the clinical use of antibiotics. The MDs have let us down again. If you have a bladder infection, if you have a kidney infection, if you have an infection anywhere in the urogenital system, then the recommendation is pretty straightforward. We do generalized immune support. That means you have to eat a diet high in protein because, well, why? Your immune system is made from protein. I bet you didn't know that. Well, if you've been a follower of mine, you knew that. Your immune system is made mostly out of protein, and so when we are attempting to upregulate the immune system, it's a good idea to eat more protein. We eat protein because we want the amino acids that the proteins are made from. Longevity has gone a step forward in this, and they've put together a complex system of uh, a complex recipe of amino acids inside their product called HGH Youth Complex. That's a very, very good product to take when you are dealing with any type of an infection in order to upregulate your immune system just by giving it the stuff that it's made out of, amino acids. I'm also a big fan of the brand new kid on the block in Longevity. It's a company called Good Herbs. Um, I'm going to be producing a webinar uh, for Good Herbs. Uh, actually, a webinar for your own edification about one of my favorite subjects in holistic medicine, herbal medicine. 
there's a lot to know and to understand about the manufacture of herbal medicines and the recipes of herbal medicines. My intention in the next month is to pump out a webinar that brings everybody up to speed. I'm very excited about the introduction of this company into Longevity. I've been waiting a long time for Longevity to align themselves with an herbal company which is up to speed. Good Herbs is in fact a most excellent herbal supplement company. And I look very forward to helping to educate you about how to use their products to optimize your structure and function and your health. Now, if you watch the webinar that I did on the lymphatic system, on the immune system, you'll know that these two systems of the body are intimately connected. So if you are dealing with any type of an infectious disease anywhere in the body, it would be a good idea to upregulate your lymphatic system and the Good Herbs product Lymphatic Health does a very, very good job of that. Now, whenever we're dealing with an infection, we want to do three things, reduce sugar intake, reduce sugar intake, reduce sugar intake, and maybe, yeah, reduce sugar intake. Why? Because every time you eat sugar, it down-regulates your immune system and puts part of your immune system to sleep. Now, remember, your DNA is made from sugar. Sugar is the gasoline of the body. You couldn't blink an eyelash without sugar. Sugar is not the antichrist. For more information about that, please reference the webinar that I did on sugar. The problem with sugar is not the sugar. The problem with sugar is how much of it are you consuming and how able is your body to regulate its own sugar metabolism. So it just makes sense that if you're dealing with any type of an infection, whether it's a bacterial infection or a yeast infection or a viral infection anywhere in the body, that it would be a good idea to decrease your consumption of extracurricular sugar and upregulate your body's ability to metabolize the sugar that it needs. And there's nothing better to, to do that than sweeties. Longevity's product, Sweeties, is perhaps the best sugar regulator I have ever seen. It's a very, very good product to add into the mix. And now once we've supported the immune system in the background with herbal support and uh, nutritional support and dietary changes, we need to think about killing the bug. And it's much better in my opinion, to attempt to kill a bug with an herbal medicine than it is with um, an antibiotic and also colloidal silver, one of the most overlooked antimicrobials currently available in the marketplace. The most progressive burn units, conventional medical allopathic MD-directed burn units, burn hospitals in all around the world are using colloidal silver um, to help stop the spread of secondary infections, which is a big bad voodoo daddy if you're suffering from a third or a fourth degree burn. So here's the rundown. Here's what the recommendation is on top, of course, of the healthy start pack, the plant-derived minerals, et cetera, et cetera, eliminate the 10 bad foods. HGH youth complex, this is 15 per day. I don't care how much you weigh. Well, if you're less than 100 pounds, you don't need to take this much. But if you did take this much, it wouldn't hurt you. Amino acids in a complex um, recipe are very good to take. It really goes a long way towards upregulating your immune system. And while you are dealing with an infection, I like to push things. So 10 to 15 of the HGH youth complex a day. Ultimate killer biotic, nine per day is a sufficient amount. Nine per day of longevity's killer biotic. And uh, colloidal silver plus by longevity, half a teaspoon every three hours. This is while you are dealing with an infection. This is not for long-term use. This is let's get over the infection, right? Let's upregulate the immune system and kill the bug. Let's do a full frontal assault here and eliminate the infectious um, process. Ultimate colloidal silver, half a teaspoon every three hours. Lymphatic health, good herbs, a half a teaspoon three to four times daily, a half a teaspoon three to four times daily of a good herbs, lymphatic health, 
and the sweeties I like to upregulate. I like to throw the sweeties into the system 12 a day. Now, when we're taking 15 a day, 9 a day, 12 a day, you don't take those all at once. You spread them out. Spread them out into three doses is the best way to do it. So HDH Youth Complex, five caps, three times a day. Killer Biotic, three caps, three times a day. Sweeties, uh, four capsules, three times a, a day. The Sweeties is the only one of these products that it would be wise for you to take on an empty stomach. Take them on an empty stomach. If you get a little bit of a burp back, if you take the Sweeties on an empty stomach, you can um, have a piece of cheese or a piece of fruit. Um, in order to help that go down. But we want to avoid foods that are high in phytates, nuts, rice, beans, spinach, right? Avoid foods that are high in phytates when we're taking any mineral supplement into the body, uh, which in this array would be the sweeties. The rest of the stuff you can take with a meal, or if you like, you can take it all between meals. It's really up to you.